Oh, good, because uh, I know what I'd like to protest. With the Kinder Morgan proposal, I think for many Canadians, it does represent a crisis. Actually, from both sides, if you want to take two, at least two sides of the issue, it is a crisis. For those that are in Alberta and the energy sector seeking to move product to market, particularly Asian markets, this represents a crisis of uncertainty and of frustration with a process that was promised to be different, which actually unites people with the, who are on the other side of this issue, who were promised a better process and more clarity about rights and title for Indigenous Canadians, about protection for our environment, and for some understanding of how, as the Liberals constantly talk about, the environment and the economy go together. Legitimate questions about the project, about the safety of our ocean environment. The federal government has reached an agreement with Kinder Morgan to purchase the existing Trans Mountain Pipeline and the infrastructure related to the Trans Mountain Expansion Project. The agreement, which is expected to close this August, was approved by Cabinet this morning and is now subject to approval by Kinder Morgan shareholders. This $4.5 billion investment represents a fair price for Canadians and for shareholders of the company and will allow the project to proceed under the ownership of a Crown Corporation. The core assets required to build the Trans Mountain Expansion Project have significant commercial value, and this transaction represents a sound investment opportunity to enter into a commercial agreement that will make the most of the economic potential of this project. It's an agreement that we believe will deliver a real return on investment for the benefit of British Columbians, Albertans, and all Canadians. $3.2 billion to provide safe drinking water for every kid living on reserve in this country. $4.5 billion to buy a 65-year-old pipeline. You have to ask yourself, what kind of priorities do these Liberals actually have? When an ex-Liberal shows up and needs a bailout, these Liberals can't find a shovel big enough to pitch in. It won't stop First Nations in court, and it won't stop people in the street. So when exactly did Liberals decide to trump First Nations' rights and title and protecting our coast? All in favor of some Texas oil company they want to help out. All in favor of some Texas oil company they want to help out. All in favor of some Texas oil company they want to help out. That ignored significant and basic concerns, and I say this to my colleague and friend, the Natural Resource Minister, that when he and his government can't answer a question like the following. Does bitumen sink when it hits salt or fresh water? And how, for God's sakes, do you clean it up if it does? They can't answer that question. They couldn't answer it when Northern Gateway was proposed in Northern British Columbia. They still can't answer it years later when they're pushing their Kinder Morgan project forward in the south of British Columbia. So how dare the Premier of my province pose such questions? That in the event of an oil spill, like the Kalamazoo spill, in the event of an accident on the sea, like the Nathan E. Stewart, or the one that happened in Vancouver Harbor, that took 14 hours in Vancouver Harbor to find booms to put up the spill. That when my premier says, how exactly do we clean this oil up when it hits our coastline? And as a premier, that's his jurisdictional responsibility. Everyone believing in the rule of law? Yes, we do. Is that the Premier's responsibility to protect on behalf of British Columbians? Yes, it is. Would you like to go to the Supreme Court and clarify that? No, they don't. No, let's not clarify those questions, say the Liberals, because they believe in the Constitution and the rule of law, except parts that they don't want to observe and acknowledge.